MMA Fancast. My name is Luke Basin, and I am honored to be joined by first-time <laughs> guest on the show, Mateo yes, Hop A. Gardner. Mateo, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm honored to be on here. I'm really excited to have you on. You are just days away, so happy fight week to your days away uh, to a heavyweight pro fight for 513 fight night for 247 fighting championships in the great city of Cincinnati, Ohio. Super exciting stuff. Usually this is where I would ask how your weight cut's going, but you're not on a weight cut. because uh, I'm doing good. You're, you're <laughs> feeling great. But you're moving up from 185 to heavyweight. So let's talk about that. You're 1-0 you're as a pro, 185. Uh, I know you're also ranked in Ohio. Topology has you ranked as the number one light heavyweight and number one uh, middleweight pro. So you've got a lot of accolades. If we went through a beer all day, you're like 33rd. So top 35 in Northeast as middleweight and light heavyweight. So Topology loves you. You've got a huge long list of amateur accolades, which we'll get to, uh, to talk about your career because you just turned pro. So let's talk about, before we even get to this fight, let's talk about you turning pro in June of this year for LFA to take on a 2-0 and guy. So that's a big start. So let's jump in there. How did you know you were ready to turn pro? You started your amateur fighting career in 2019 to 2023, according to your Facebook. So four years, you took a ton of fights, got a lot of accolades. How did you know it was time to go pro and talk us through that LFA fight? So <clears throat> I jumped into the game sparring and training with guys that were already on the level that I'm at now, or if not better. So originally I started at All American MMA Academy with Nick Brown, Ethan Hayes, Brandon. Awesome. Yeah. That's where that's where I started. And those guys didn't they didn't baby me in. Like they beat they beat me up. They they showed me how it was John Leon Ku, like they showed me how it was gonna be. So right then and there I knew like I was already ahead of the game uh when it came to amateurs. And then, uh, you know, things happened. The gym started slowing down, things like that. I was going through some personal things, and I decided I needed to make the transition, and I did. And I'll always have love for All-American. I always go back there when I'm home and train with those guys, give them shout-outs, all things like that. I decided to make the uh, transition to Demolition Fight Team. And when I got here, it was like that all over again. I went from winning, like, the Ohio Combat League title feeling like I was good, feeling like I was a top amateur and stuff like that. Then I got the demolition. There were guys with no fights who were giving me hard goes and beating me up in the gym. And I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, I thought I was good. I thought I was somebody, but I got humbled again, like real quick. And training with Dylan, Dylan Butka, that helped me get ready. He helped me get better at my wrestling. You know, all the guys, Dylan Butka, Ferreris, Golden, the list goes on and on. We have so many guys and I have so many people that I'm thankful for that helped me get to this um, process that I'm at. So I guess I always knew I had the talent and the work ethic. I, it's one of them things you just know. I can't really explain how I knew, but I just I just knew. And my coach believed in me and I know my coach wouldn't put me in a, a position that I couldn't handle. So I just I you just know when you're ready. You just know it's. It's kind of like that it factor, they say. You either have it or you don't. You just you kind of just know. It's one of them things. Well, that makes perfect sense. You know, it's always great to hear good things about All-American. I've had Nick Brown on the show a couple of times. He's incredible. Got to see him main event and win down in Morgantown a couple months ago and got to see and watch Ethan Hayes do some great stuff. Um, re really incredible stuff that you started out there. Um you mentioned Demolition Fight Team, and we are just a day removed from Dylan Butka being on Dana White Contender Series. In fact, you know this. We were supposed to do this interview yeah. yesterday, and uh, yeah. obviously more important things to watch. Dylan, let's talk about that. What was that like for a guy that sparred with him to see him, I, I think, 12 days after he had won a pro heavyweight fight? Yeah. Uh, similar to you, right? Jumping up from 185 to pro heavyweight to just get a fight, to stay active, beat the guy by submission, and then ended up getting a very last-minute call to Dana White Contender Series um, yeah. to fight a guy that they they were really pushing. You know, they're really pushing this guy who's a great athlete, obviously, from South Africa, 33 years old. Your buddy Dylan's just 23. 
He goes in there, gets a really good Dominic Nana's decision. Wasn't the most exciting fight, but he really showed that he can control and win fights. Um, and then he got the contract, and now he's in the UFC. What was that like for you? And and what do you see as the future for Dylan? Right. Dylan's future is bright. Dylan, he'll fight anybody, anytime, anywhere, any weight. Um, it was inspiring because I work with this dude 24-7. That is my main training partner. You know what I mean? So I already knew he had it. I already knew he won. And like I said before, me and him had a relationship. Um, so I always knew he was – we had a relationship before we became teammates. So I always knew he was like – he was a dog. He's always been that guy that just take fights on short notice. He's real active. He doesn't take any damage. He's a great wrestler. He had like 18 fights as an amateur between MMA and boxing. What people don't know is he went 12-0 and 0 in boxing. Like, he has some hands on him. He just hasn't shown them yet how people want to see him. It was just inspiring to see because, like, I know I'm right around the corner. You know what I mean? And, like, it's, like, it's inspiring. It motivated me. It made me want to level up. You know what I mean? It, it It's like it hit home. It's right there. Like, I'm going to see this guy in the gym, you know what I mean, this week when he comes back and things like that and, very inspiring. That's really all it is, is inspiring. And it makes me feel like, okay, I'm I'm even getting towards something. I'm working towards I'm getting somewhere. So it was like it was awesome to see. And not even just for me, for him. Like I know he's so happy. And that's all that matters. It's like he deserves that. Like he deserves that. Like he deserves everything. Yeah, it wasn't an exciting fight. People may say that, but like he took the fight on five days and fought a bigger oh, man and cut twenty five yeah. pounds. Cut twenty five pounds. And he just fought two weeks ago. Yeah. I, I don't know say, what else. I don't know what else you expect uh, from somebody. Right. And obviously Dana White gave him a contract. So you'll soon be sparring with a UFC fighter. That's really exciting. It yeah. shows how gyms, gyms sort of level up as their fighters mature, to your point. Yeah. I personally loved it. You know, I've been around MMA and watched MMA enough to know and been cage side like I'll be for your fight. That that, that idea that a boring fight exists is only if you've never trained it or sparred it like what he mm -hmm. was doing against a bigger taller longer opponent takes a lot of work i personally think he did show the ability to strike you mentioned his hands in space for boxing but i really liked when the guy was on fours he was on the side throwing a lot of nice stuff on the side and people don't realize I mean, it makes it makes sense but think about it you know this getting hit with a punch you can't see sucks way worse than getting hit with a punch you can see coming in. And yes. know, to, be, to be on your, all your fours and taking these, they might look like little shots, but they really suck because you don't know where they're coming from. And a lot of times people use that to set up their rear naked choke or a back take or putting legs in, things like that. So Dylan showed himself to be awesome. And obviously uh, Dana wants him to go to 170. It'll kind of depend on, on what works best for him. But let's talk about the fact that, and this relates really well to you, Dylan bumped from one eight, usually fighting at 185 to fighting at like 207 because he was technically a heavyweight in his last fight. Yeah. But you are fighting a heavyweight come Saturday for 247 fighting. Who last time he weighed in, he was like 257. He looks like a guy that gets right up close to that 265. So what's the, yeah. and don't give away your game plan, but what's the confidence level of taking on a guy? Um, who is obviously going to outweigh you by probably roughly 50 pounds, 45 pounds. And uh, why say yes to this fight for this Saturday? Obviously, you've already fought a bunch at light heavyweight and middleweight. Confidence level is because I know my ability and I know skills pays the bills and size doesn't. And I'm coming into this fight very humble. And it's, it's I feel like it, 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 it wakes me up, it motivated me because I want to prove myself in this division for some reason right now. I just, you know, and I'm strong right now, 215, solid, mm -hmm. strong, fast. I'm not cutting weight. Yeah. Um, I got good cardio. I just, I feel like it's it's a great matchup for me. I know he has the size advantage. I'm not going to fight him stupid. You know, I'm not like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, you know, so I just feel like it's, it's what fell into my lap, and I've been looking for a fight. I've been saying I'll fight anyone. So if I'm going to talk to talk, I have to walk to walk too, and that's that's what I'm here to do. 
I'm not coming into this fight thinking I'm about to like I'm coming into this fight very humbly, very smart, ready to go, very focused. I know he's a big boy. I know he's going to try to lean that weight on me, throw haymakers, put me on the put me on the cage, try to make it a little ugly. We got we got game plans for all of that. Sure. So, I mean, yeah. I'm just coming here very humbly and I'm ready to go and I just want to let my fighting do the talking. I mean, that makes per I really makes perfect sense and people may not realize how hard it is for uh, a regional fighter, you know, for a pro like yourself, you're one and oh, of course, your opponents also want to know. So that's great, too. Um, you know, it, it, that's good. That, that, that'll promote whoever wins career. But what people may not realize is I always say if you're basically under five to eight pro fights, it can be really hard to get fights. You think people would just be gobbling up the, the yeah. guys like you and others and like your opponent. But the reality is a lot of times early in a career and of course your buddy Dylan didn't do do this and you didn't do this people are more picky it's like once they get to the UFC they're like okay I'll fight who you tell me to fight because you're the UFC but a lot of times fighters on the regional level at low level like low level pro are even pickier because they want to keep that spotless record they want to you know and Dylan did it right you know he ended up picking up two losses on his way but he fought six pro fights in a year like you know, he showed his willingness, mm -hmm. and I can see that in you. You fought in June. Now you're going to be fighting in September. Um, and so I think it makes perfect sense. You described your willingness. I personally think, and I think a lot of people will say this, I've always thought like a 225-pound division in the UFC would make a lot of sense. Stipe Miocic, my favorite heavyweight fighter of all times, weighed in like 228, 231 when he was doing his thing, and obviously eventually got crushed by Ngannou, who was at the very upper end of that. But I personally think after 205, a 225 or a 230 would make sense for yeah. guys, your phrase and frame and things like that. For you, obviously, you're, you're athletic. You've got all of these accolades. Let's back it up because you said you and your team have come up with game plan for all the advantages that your opponent has. And clearly, we'll talk about them after the fight Saturday. But let's back up a little bit. For you as an amateur, you know, there's a long list of things, several titles, several awards, but let, let's do it this way. What were like the two main highlights of your amateur career, whether it was your first win or a big title? Like what, what stood out to you now that you're a pro and what stood out to you from your uh, amateur? Um, obviously the 22nd knockout, that felt good. The, the one, the right, the right hand, just boom, just right then and there, just, like, I always knew I had power, but there's a difference between TKO and somebody when the ref stops in and then you put them to sleep. So that was a highlight for me. And um, going in against Daryl Booker when he was 5-3 and three or 6-3 and three for my first title fight, and I was like 3-1, and one, mm -hmm. and everybody was doubting me. Everybody thought I was going to lose and he was going to knock me out because he had like three knockouts at the time. He had heavy hands. He was putting people down and just going in there and controlling the fight how I did and being calm, doing everything that I was taught and just listening to my coaches. And that was a milestone for me, my first title. Like that right there let me know like, okay, I got something here. So that was when that was that, the knockout. And when I won my first title was definitely the – biggest highlights of my MMA career, amateur career, at least so far. That's when I knew when I won that title, I was like, okay, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good at this. That's when I really gained a lot of confidence. Like I'm good at this. And that obviously makes sense. And congrats on that, on that big win. But that's another reason why at the amateur level for fighters watching this, it, it can be tough, but as an amateur fighter, you've got to take fights where you could lose, right? You got to take fights where, the person has better experience or like in your case, you were talking about a guy that had three knockouts. Like there, there's gotta be risk involved. No, it's okay to take a couple when you're developing, but once you've gotten some fights under your, your belt, it, it, there comes that leveling up as an amateur. And clearly that was your moment of leveling up. Speaking of leveling up, you made your pro debut. So now we're back in the pro. You made your pro debut for LFA, which is a well-known, a, a well-known regional promotion kind of very well, Regarded, I think 247 is right up there as well. Obviously, I work for them. I love 247. But LFA's got quite a track record, CFFC, Legacy, a couple of those promotions do yeah. too. Um, why say, like, how'd that come together? Why say yes to a 2-0 guy 
And what was that? What was that experience like? I'm looking at your pictures on Facebook of you posing in front of the LFA banner. Obviously, that's a big deal to make your promotion for them. So what, what was that whole experience like to you? And then walk us through the fight. I know you got the finish in the second round. So tell us about that. So when I heard I got the fight, I was like, man, like it's time. Like it's time to put up or shut up. And I knew it was like an eight mile moment. Like Israel Adesanya said one time, like it's like an eight mile moment. Like this is your, like you gotta, this is your only chance. So, and I know how fight pass shows are. Like they want the guys that are winning. They want the guys they can promote. So I'm like, I can't lose this fight. First of all, like if I'm going to take this fight, I have to win. And it was the hardest training camp of my life. This was by far the hardest training camp, the hardest I've ever trained. So once again, I felt like I was a good, it was a good matchup for me. Good fight for me. Um, Trent not tough dude, great kickboxer, great at jujitsu. Um, so found out I got the fight locked in the team. They pushed me, coach pushed me. Um, manifestation telling myself every day, I'm going to finish this guy. I'm going to finish this guy. I won't break. He won't break me. No matter what he hits me with, I won't break. I'm going to drive through this guy. I'm going to finish this guy. Telling myself that every single day, three times a day, three times a day until I really believed it, until I didn't even have to say it anymore. I just kind of knew it. Telling myself that every day. And um, fight day comes, weigh-ins come. I make weight, feeling good eat, you know, you're feeling good. Now you're really thinking straight when the weight cuts over. Fight day comes, wake up, do my light shadow boxing, get my stretching in, all them things. Um, Fight day comes, I make that walk. I got to that cage and I just felt like I owned the place. That's just really what it was. Like I did, like I felt like I owned the place. And it was like, and I was just like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be here. I was feeling good. Ref says, let's fight. And it just, it just happened that way. And I, I knew he was a great fighter. I knew, I knew what I had to do. Check the leg kicks. I knew, you know, I knew what I had to do. Um, And it, it was just, just, it was, it was, it was amazing. And like I said, Trent Knott's a great fighter. Fighting him, fighting, beating a 2-0 really helped me, I believe. And sure. it was just. I can't really explain it because, like, to get your debut on a Fight Pass show, you know what I mean? Like, I remember watching Nick Brown back in 2019 fighting on LFA and fighting for the world title against that tough Brazilian. Like, I was an amateur then. And I remember how good Nick was beating me up every day, submitting me five times a round, one round. Like, I, I just remember, like, watching, like, man, like, that's going to be me. Like, I don't I don't know when these guys look different level, but that's going to be me. And just – and now, just like that, it's I'm there. So it was, like – it was a great experience. And I look forward to fighting for them again. And I'll fight anywhere, man. Until I get to the big show, I'll fight anywhere. I'm not picky about where I fight. I just want to fight. I love fighting, so – well, and that brings us to the fight this Saturday. Again, you know, Jim Mooney, the legendary matchmaker for 247, he obviously got in contact. The fight works. Um, I'm not super familiar with where Demolition Fight Team is located, but um, – oh. Finley, Ohio. Finley, Ohio. Okay, so is this going to be a hometown crowd for you from Finley, Ohio to Cincinnati? What, what's that going to look like Saturday? No, uh, I honestly just tried to sell as many tickets as I could for the guaranteed people I knew that would come because, like I said, I just got the fight a week ago. Oh. Um, I, I, I just, I, this wasn't planned. I was looking for an opponent. Like four people backed out already. So you know, like family members, things like that. I got people watching. You know, this is this fight is all business for me. I feel like I got a lot to prove. Like I, I'm big on haircuts. That's what I'm big on. Like I love being fresh. I love getting a fade, getting the part of my hair, getting a nice cut. I'm not even getting a haircut for this fight. Oh my! It's I'm big, like it's that serious to me. Like I want to prove myself because I feel like he thinks I'm little and he thinks he's just gonna bully me around. And I want to prove that I'm all business and I want him to feel my presence when I'm in there. And this and no matter what, good, pretty, ugly, no matter what, the goal is to get my hand raised Saturday, be victorious. So it's all business for me right now. I I. I don't care who comes. I don't care who watches. It's it's that serious for me right now. That's the chip I have on my shoulder bumping up in the weight class. 
makes sense. It, it, and, and that's the exciting part, right? Like you, you have your gym behind you, you've got Dylan Budka, your coaches, but you're the one in the cage. So you put it into action just like you have ever since you've been training under Nick Brown. It's really, it's really cool how you've developed. I've absolutely loved having you on, uh, on the show. It's super, super exciting. Let's get to shout out. Thank yous. You've already mentioned some people, but let's put names, to coaches, you know, that type of stuff. And obviously no offense to anybody who Mateo forgets. It's not that he's forgetting. It's just, there's a lot, but who do you, yeah. who do you feel really supports you the most going into this? All right. Well, I'm a man of faith. So I'm just going to say, I thank God for everything. That's number one. Uh, number two, my mom with my mom and my dad, they go together. They made a lot of sacrifices for me growing up. And, you know, it wasn't always easy, but they made sure their baby boy had what he needed. Um, Coach Gary for changing my life and believing in me. Gary Young. Um, like I said, everybody at All-American. Everybody at All-American. They know who they are. Always. I'm still in a group chat with all of them. They will always They will always be loved. Um, Chef John, John Leonku. Yeah, like a brother, man. like a, that's like my brother. Me and him are literally this close. He's awesome. He's awesome. Like, that was a tough. That was a tough pro debut because I really think he was right yeah. there at getting that pro debut win. But he's been on the show. He's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's been here for me, not just MMA, but through things in life that I've been through that people don't even know about. So shout out Chef John, um, Demolition Fight Team. Everybody here pushing me, letting me know all the time, like. Like I'm the one. They 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 instill this confidence in me. Like they let me know I'm the one, but the, but at the same time they keep me on my toes. They keep me humble. So at the same time, sure. so I want to say I want to say thank you, thank you to everybody at Demolition. Um. Yeah, thank you, thank you to all the promoters that get me on their shows. You know, thank thank everybody, thank you for having me on the show. Like every little bit helps. You know what sure. I mean? Like I. So I'm just very thankful, very blessed. And like I said, it's all business and I'm just ready. I'm ready to go. Try not to think about it too much. My coach always tells me you shouldn't even be thinking about it until 15 minutes before you walk out. No need to waste that energy. No, no need to waste that energy. But it's like a Friday night football game. You don't want to go to sleep. You don't want to go to sleep Thursday night. You're just ready. You know what I mean? And you're just ready to go. Like Your, your, coach, is, your coach is right, though. I want you Saturday night. Thinking to yourself, I wonder why my hand's getting wrapped. Like, what's what's happening? What's happening? You know, because you can only think about the fight 15 minutes before. So, uh, but I've loved having you on. What what I really like to do. It's one of the exciting parts about doing this YouTube channel. Is my hope is to follow you going forward. You know, so that I love having repeat. Even if you end up fighting, you know, all over the place. Hopefully, one day UFC, just like your buddy Dylan did. Like that's that's one of the exciting parts. I. I follow a lot of guys from 247, but I end up following people all over. That's the fight business. Always really exciting. So hope to have you back after the fight to talk about it. And then also whatever's next for you down the road. Uh, it's just been awesome having you on. Thanks for sharing. It's been great timing for you to be able to talk about Dylan Bucket for Dan Dana White Contender Series. It's just perfect yeah. timing. And speaking of timing, it's going to be September 9th before you know it, this Saturday. I know. And, and for all the people – watching that aren't going to be making the, the drive-in 247fighting.com for the pay-per-view and give Mateo Gardner obviously credit uh, when you're when you're checking out that makes a big difference for him and also for the promoter to know what's what's what with that so you've been listening to MMA Fancast with Luke Basin and first time hopefully of many on the show really appreciate you coming on Mateo Top Ape Gardner thanks so much Thank Mateo, you. for coming on Appreciate you. Okay. See you Saturday. See you.